Okay, a couple more things. I want to put some labels here so that you have an idea of what's where. So this interface right here, this serial interface, I want to put the number here so it's easy to see in the video. 200.10.0.1. Okay, and then this one over here will be 200.10.0.2. All right, and those, in fact, are the addresses. I'm just double checking. All right, perfect. Okay, and now to make this situation work so that these PCs can ping or communicate all the way over to the server, what we need to do is set up some uh, static routes, a, de a default route on these routers. So I'm going to set up a default route on this router so that any traffic it gets, if it doesn't know where the destination is, it's going to send it out of its serial interface. And then likewise on this router, I'll set up a static default route so that any information that it gets or any destination IP addresses that it does not understand it would send it out its default route sending it out of its serial interface so to do that it's pretty easy just to open up the router I'm gonna get very quickly into global config mode okay so now I'm in global configuration mode and what I'm gonna do is do IP route to the 0.0.0 .0 .0 dot zero and then subnet mask zero dot zero dot zero dot zero and then a space and then the interface that you want to go out of and that is going to set up a uh, default route out of the serial interface okay so that's good and now on the other router I'll do the same thing so control C takes me back to hit enter takes me back to privileged exec mode conf t which is short for configure terminal gets me back to global config and now I can put in a static route IP space route to all zeros space and same serial to slash zero so now there are default routes for each one of these routers now this I also configured the second PC off screen so now this PC should be able to ping the server. Okay? So I'm going to ping 10.0.0.254 and it might take a second but I should get a response. Okay, there's the response. So there's a successful communication. So now it can communicate across the network. So now that the network is finally set up, we can demonstrate how NAT functions. So, for instance, this server right here is running a web server, right? I can, uh, well, this is a web server, so I'll open up this PC, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this virtual web browser here in Packet Tracer, and I'm going to put in his IP address, 10.0.0.254. Right, and as you can see, there is a there's the web server, there's the web page, the default web page, right, for the virtual web server. So we're able to reach it. All right, but normally, this guy's on a private network. We're not going to be able to see him if NAT is operating. What we would be doing is we would be putting in the public IP address of the router. So this IP address right here. So right now, if I was to put in though 200. Dot 10 dot zero dot two you see I don't get anything right so I don't get anything when I put in the public IP address of the router right if I want to get to the web page to the web server I've got to put in the private IP address well that's no good that's not how it works in the real world in the real world this private IP address would be hidden so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up NAT so that the router translates the private IP address of the web server to the public IP address so we're gonna set up a static uh, NAT situation. Okay, static NAT configuration. So I'll go to the router and I need to be in global config mode, which I am, and I'm going to say IP NAT inside. Notice I'm in global config here, router config. IP NAT inside the source be static, right, is going to be 
0.254. This is the private address, right? The source, right? And we're going to NAT it to 200.10.0.2. Okay? And there it is. It's done. So IP NAT inside source static. 10 network, 10.0.0.254, uh, .0 .0 so this host will be statically mapped to this public IP address on the outside. So now all we have to do is go into our interfaces and assign it to the interfaces. So I go to the interface, int, serial 2 slash 0, and I say IP NAT outside, hit enter, and then interface fast ethernet fa 0 slash 0 right now I'm in that interface and I'll say IP NAT and this is the inside of our network right the outside is our serial interface and the inside is the ethernet interface hit enter and so now I have it configured right show run for show running configuration and you can see now that there is my IP NAT outside on the serial 2.0 on fast ethernet there's my IP NAT inside there is my configuration command to make NAT work right and so now what I can do is I can go to this PC I can open up a web browser and I can put in the public IP address of the router which is HTTP colon forward slash forward slash 200 dot 10 dot zero dot two and it's translated to the web server and I get my web page so now the web servers private IP address has been translated to the public IP address and the web servers hiding behind the router